Okay, thank you all for joining. Um, I'm Shannon Peary. I'm the Special Director for the Nurse Midwifery Education Program. And I'm also the project coordinator for the Rural Midwifery Track. Um, today's information session, like I said, will be recorded and we're gonna be posting it on the website. Um, to get started, we'll go over just the purpose of the, um, the track is to uh, um, increase the number of certified nurse midwives that practice in rural maternity care settings um, and specifically um, covering shortage areas in Colorado. Our goal is to prepare graduating and new midwives to be clinically and professionally prepared to work as independent providers of culturally relevant pregnancy and reproductive care in rural Colorado. And then creating a distinct rural track recognizes the unique knowledge, skills, and behaviors necessary for rural midwifery practice. It also values um, the building of a larger and well-trained rural healthcare workforce. <clears throat> I wanted to just give a little orientation to what HIPSAs and MUAs are. Um, HIPSAs and MUAs are an area um, that are um, we hope to impact most with this um, track. Um, a HIPSA is a healthcare provider shortage area, and this is a shortage of providers for an entire group of people as defined by a geographic area. And then a MUA is a medically underserved area, and this is a geographic area that lack access to primary care resources. Um, and these designations help establish health maintenance organizations or community centers. So just to show a little bit about Colorado, um, we're trying to get more um, midwives to be in the specifically green areas and um, also the yellow areas or tan. Um, the white areas are generally well served, although there are designated sites in those areas based on vulnerable populations, um, but really looking at key um, uh, in, in those uh, green areas and um, on the borders of those. The other thing I'll point out is this is HIPSAs um, for the entire country. So dark green um, are people who have the highest need and then the lighter green is the least need. Um, and then actually the white with lines is no score, it doesn't um, fall into the ranking. <clears throat> And then I'll have you look at that just in comparison to what maternity shortage looks like. So sometimes they overlap, sometimes they don't. Unfortunately, not all states recognize maternity care deserts. And um, part of this work is to help both fill primary care shortage areas with midwives, but also um, um, obviously maternity care shortage areas. <clears throat> okay, the requirements. Um, students to apply to this program, this track will need to already be accepted to the CU Nurse Midwifery Program, either as a master's student, a BS to DMP student, or postgraduate certificate student. The application um, information for that are on our website, and I'm happy to meet with you separately about questions regarding the specific midwifery program. Students within this track also must maintain a full-time plan of study. They must be eligible to work in the United States and have the intention to work as a midwife in the rural healthcare setting for two years after graduation. About the track, the program includes a, um, a specially developed preparation for rural professional practice program, which we call the PRPP. Um, this is for trainees of the rural midwifery track. This program will include peer mentorship, or peer support, mentorship, rural education experiences, scope of practice expansion um, and training and the employment preparation for midwifery practice in rural Colorado. These are specifically things like beyond competency education on mental health care, care of patients with substance use disorders, cultural and linguistically appropriately care service training, um, cesarean first assist training, limited OB ultrasound training, leadership, practice management, and well-being education. Um, at the beginning of that bullet, I mentioned beyond competency. Our midwifery program is um, 
based on the core competencies that are set forth to us by ECNM and um, through um, ACME, our accrediting body. And this specifically is saying that our program prepares you to be a midwife, but um, maybe it doesn't prepare you, nor do the competencies of, um, of the core midwifery um, education prepare, do they prepare um, midwives to work in the rural and underserved settings like this? And so these education and trainings are beyond that of that is expected of a, a new graduate midwife to help um, those in this track thrive in that uh, rural setting. <clears throat> the plan of study, uh, each student will maintain um, the plan of study um, unless it doesn't, in, unless you're admitted to the program already and it doesn't meet full-time requirements, then we would need to adjust it to become full-time. All new students admitted to the program will be admitted with a full-time plan of study. Full time for graduate graduate education means at least six credits in each fall and spring semester and three credits in the summer. There will also be um, quarterly rural midwifery track sessions that will be have required attendance. This is where you'll receive that um, extra training. And then for clinical placements, about half of the hours will be completed at a rural site placement that we will find for you. And then the other half will be on the Anschutz campus to ensure um, access to high volume and um, uh, completion of the clinical competencies within the one year clinical year. Um, clinicals will likely occur in a block schedule to help maximize the time that you're spent closest to where you call home. So if your home is in a rural location, um, that you're only coming to Denver for chunks of time to complete these high volume clinicals. And if you are in a um, urban setting and you're going to the rural setting for these clinicals, then you can maximize the time that you are here in Denver and um, only going to the rural setting for the, the clinical hours you need to be there. Um, housing at the rural location will be supported by AHEC, and then um, later on we'll talk more about it, but the living stipend that each student will receive um, will also is also aimed to um, support the housing. Okay, so financial benefit, the um, scholarship is for full tuition and, pay, and fees paid for seven full-time semester um, for MS and BSDMP students and four full-time uh, semesters for PGC students. Out-of-state students are encouraged to apply, but please note that the full tuition paid covers the cost of in-state tuition only. We are, um, as it states below, we are a witchy state, so for states that are bordering Colorado or uh, there's some other unique states that kind of fall into that, there's, um, uh, it's like about in state plus 50% that the cost is as opposed to full out of state. Um, and then to, re to get in state tuition, it requires one year of residency in Colorado. And um, on the application or on the website around the application, you can see a link for that criterion. Additionally, the financial support um, comes in this living stipend and um, students will get a, approximately $32,000 per year. This is a fall, spring, summer year, um, and this will continue throughout the seven full-time semesters at a prorated amount for the years where um, students are in school the entire year. <clears throat> And then rural health employment. Um, so the commitment is to work in a HIPSA um, for two years post-graduation as a nurse midwife. Part of this track is job support. And so um, we, uh, the, the students in this track will attend a rural job fair through the Colorado Rural Health Center and additionally attend the Colorado Rural Health Center's annual rural health conference, which is a wonderful um, uh, marketing of oneself and um, meeting of the community members. Throughout the program, we will give you the tools and support needed to find a job. This is through resume and cover letter review, helping support you in relationship development with those rural health um, care providers, um, and then explanations of possible rural health role negotiations. This is to say that um, not all jobs in these rural settings are going to be 
um, jobs that you might be able to find when searching uh, on the job search right now. Um, we are going to help support you in thinking about what would it look like to negotiate for a midwifery role to exist in a place where midwives don't exist currently. Um, instead of um, maybe joining a midwifery practice, joining family medicine practice, or um, joining in with an OBGYN to help expand the impact that they're able to make and show the benefit of having a nurse midwife as part of the team. Um, also, these roles don't, do not have to be in Colorado. Um, they can be in other states and we can help that negotiation as well. Um, they do just need to be in that um, rural HIPSA area. Um, our goal is to grow the number of nurse midwives in the rural, rural settings to improve health outcomes for patients in these underserved and under-resourced settings. Um, and like I said, they can be in Colorado or elsewhere. And then lastly, um, the application process is current students with um, an anticipated fall 2025 graduation um, are encouraged to apply by the deadline of uh, the 15th of November. Interviews will be held on the 15th of December and our final decisions will be sent out by the end of the year. If you are not one of those students who are gonna graduate in fall 2025, then we encourage you um, to um, apply in next May. Uh, you can obviously apply sooner than that if you wish to, um, but the end of May will have the application due for the next two years. Um, this May for the fall of 2026 graduation and then the following May for fall of 2027 graduation. Um, and I did want to just kind of link to this, um, website. Can you all still see the website? Yes, I can see it. Awesome. Thank you so much. So here on this website, this takes you to our homepage. You can click on this link here and it will pop you down, um, further to the information about the track. Um, lots of this is some information that we covered today. This is that um, state authorization uh, re reciprocity agreement that talks about um, uh, what where you can live um, and be educated by us. So this is important if you're considering attending to our program from out of state. Um, and then this... Um, Um, actually, it looks like we don't have the link for how to become a Colorado um, resident here on this page, but it is within the university system, and I'm happy to link it to you if that's something you're interested in. Um, but here is just, again, clearly lined out the scholarship and stipend, um, the admission criteria, the process, and then the further information sessions. Uh, I just wanted to click on one of the applications so you can um, kind of see how it works. Um, this is for the group that's just about to, that will start in January. And um, we encourage you to read through these bullet points clearly. And additionally, be very thoughtful in your responses. Um, at the end of this application, I'm gonna scroll down to it. There are two questions and um, we want you to answer these concisely but thoroughly um, in 500 to 1,000 words for both questions. Um, you will upload a file of them. Uh, references don't count in the word count. Um, and we want you to have done some research, like reach, inquire within your community, um, inquire into rural communities if you're not a part of one, and really be thoughtful about how you plan to um, work in this community or what are the barriers that need to be addressed. Um, we expect um, some pretty high quality candidates to be applying for this um, due to some uh, the wonderful benefits of this of the program, but we also want to make sure that um, those who are applying for this understand um, the work that they have laying ahead of them. So I just wanted to kind of go through that page um, so that everyone had a chance to see it. I will um, stop share now, and um, I will also um, 
If you can place your email in the chat, I am happy to send that PowerPoint out to you as well. Um, so you can reference it later. And um, like I said at the beginning, I'll be posting this um, on the journal website. What questions might you have? Thank you. I had a question about the training that happens um, or the support for outside the core competencies. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit more what that will be like? Is that going to be just access to community or is that going to be like more personalized, um, you know, like with professionals from specific counties in the in the state that can kind of talk about their experience? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I can address it. S to some extent, some of the curriculum is being developed as we speak. We, we just received this grant on the 1st of October. And so um, some of the fine details that I think you might be looking for, we might not have. But what we have envisioned is that, um, let's say there's a session um, during the clinicals on substance use disorder. Um, so during that time, we will have experts from the field come and speak about caring for that population um, in a didactic way. And then during your clinicals, we would ensure a clinical placement um, in at least for uh, some of your hours in a setting where you manage patients with substance use disorder. Um, same thing with um, mental health concerns. And then as far as the like trainings of first assist and ultrasound, we will, um, those are courses that students will take here on campus and um, we'll, and we'll get to the opportunity to do those clinical um, skills in clinical settings, most likely in the rural setting. Um, uh, ultrasound is performed in all settings of clinicals, but first assist is not as often done in academia because there's resident learners who are doing that. But that's kind of, I, I don't know if that helps answer it. And we are still in the way of connecting with um, our rural community partners to see um, their interest and um, uh, time span to be able to involved and educate it from the vision or the, from the eyes of someone from rural healthcare. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Wonderful. I have a few questions. So, yeah. On the website, it looks like it says one of the admission criteria is that you have to already be accepted and in, um, enrolled in the program. So is this something where you would apply for the scholarship after you find out if you're enrolled? Absolutely. Yep. And so okay. we, we've we closed our spring 24 enrollment, um, but our fall 24 enrollment closes in the middle of December. So the application is still open and we will complete the interviews in mid spring so that um, everyone knows by the application deadline for this track, if they have been accepted to the cohort that would graduate in 2026. Okay, that makes sense. And then yeah. if you do work in a health professional shortage area that's out of state, do you lose any of that scholarship money? No, you'd receive the full scholarship amount, but you, it would not cover your full tuition if you don't have in-state tuition. Uh, but for the requirement after, like to work for two years after, would it affect anything or no? Are you saying like if you were to go and work in that rural setting instead of being in Colorado? Yeah, like if um, you were to take like a rural setting job like in Wyoming or Kansas or somewhere else yeah. for two years, does that still pay back or no? Yep, that does. Yep. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Our biased goal is to grow the midwives in Colorado, but we understand that Colorado yes. has the ability to serve a lot of rural areas around us. So, um, I just have a clarifying question about something you mentioned earlier. Um, yeah. so the you said the rural midwifery track, you get trained to first assist. Is that something that's not available in the general midwifery program? That's correct. It's not okay. a core competency. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, students may have the opportunity to do such experiences or to become first assist trained on their own, um, but it's not paid for or supported within the normal curriculum. 
Okay, I see. Thank you. Yeah, great question. I had another question. Yeah. If if we apply and don't get the scholarship, but are still interested in working in a rural area, is it possible to work with faculty to kind of see what options are available? Yeah, I think we probably will. I mean, we are, um, like I said earlier, much in the learning journey as we are developing this. And I, I believe our goal is to create a sustainable program that will exist beyond this grant funding or that we could receive the grant funding again, but I would be surprised if we can't naturally integrate some of this um, learning that we do about supporting students to work in a rural setting into our regular program. So I think that students outside of the track will also benefit from some of the information. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? If you think of any, feel free to give me an email um, or send me an email. My email is um, on the front of that college website. Um, it says contact the special director. It would come straight to me. Um, but I will send you all an email with the um, copy of the PowerPoint. And I look forward to hearing if you have any other questions. I believe our next information session is on the 27th. Um, so you can join back if you're interested. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you all yeah, so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining.